in the heart of Silicon Valley, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering OpenStack Silicon Valley 2015, brought to you by Mirantis. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Brick. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live for day two coverage of theCUBE, Silicon Angle's flagship program. We go out to the event, instruct the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined with my co-host Jeff Frick, general manager of our CUBE operation. We are here in Mountain View, the Computer History Museum for the OpenStack Silicon Valley conference, event, industry participations here. Some customers, mostly industry uh, leaders. Our next guest is Jesse Proudman with Blue Box, CEO, founder, now part of IBM, recently acquired by IBM, winner of last year's CUBE Madness, um, um, event. Welcome to, back to the Cube. Yes, it's a weekly event now. <laughs> <laughs> Next year we're going to we're gonna actually make it a security hackathon. Perfect. Each bracket will be a harder level of security. I'll, I'll judge and it. As you, <laughs> we're going to kind of turn it into what it is. Welcome back. My pleasure to be here. All right, so give us the update. Part of IBM, um, IBM big investment in the cloud. We cover them across the board. Blue Mix is hot. They're kind of really moving very fast to build out the cloud. And you know, we heard from Monty Taylor recently moved from HP to IBM. Big things are in the works. Yeah. Big ideas. Yep. And you were a very successful entrepreneur. You didn't need to sell your company to IBM. You were already rich, you already had great success. OpenStack is on the dawn of great things. Why sell to IBM? Yeah, it's a great question. So uh, multiple ways to answer this. So we'll start off by, by who we all talk. We talked with everybody in the OpenStack space. And that was one of the coolest parts about going through an M&A transaction is you literally get to meet with so many of the leaders and we learned about everybody's strategy. IBM was the only company that, to me, felt like they had a coherent story. And so we, we go through the M&A process, we get acquired, um, and I'm in New York a couple, well, about a week after the deal closed, and we're presenting the new strategy to the analyst community. It's basically this three by three grid, public, dedicated, local, so it doesn't matter where the location is, Blue Mix, services, IaaS, doesn't matter what the mix of, of what you're buying is, but you're delivering that entire story as a service. And IBM is the only company that gets that. What is cloud today? Cloud is an SLA and an experience. It's not software, it's not open source, it's not, uh, it's not technology that I put on premises, it's about getting an experience that I don't have to worry about. And I think the challenge with private clouds historically has been, they've been putting the, the onus of that problem on the buyer. IBM Cloud doesn't want to do that. And so, look, IBM realizes they're late to the game, they've made that recognition, but they are a unique organization that has enterprise experience, they have a global footprint, they've got relationships, they've got an incredibly smart engineering organization, and now they've got the best strategy in cloud. I think we bring all of those things together, and it's a no-brainer. So being part of that at this point in time, being able to influence and direct that, couldn't be more exciting. So I got to ask you a question I've been asking every guest that's come on here this past two days. Does hybrid cloud actually exist? Does it exist? So yes, hybrid cloud exists, it depends on what your definition is. So I like the 451 definition, which is essentially a single workload, one application, that spans two infrastructures. So a great example is a customer of ours named Big Fish Games. They have a data center, it runs existing equipment, they have a private cloud with us, it runs application compute. Those two things are interconnected with a fiber cross connect, and they run a single workload, a single application across both of those. That's hybrid cloud. The notion of hybrid cloud where things kind of magically move to wherever is the least expensive or the most performant, that doesn't exist. But being able to, to target workloads and connect different environments, that exists and is alive today. But hybrid today. cloud, is it a product or is it an outcome of an engineering exercise? It's the outcome of an engineering exercise. There's no, you don't go and you buy, I would like one hybrid cloud please. You combine multiple technologies, a public, a private, two private clouds, private cloud and legacy infrastructure. You combine those with a single workload and you get a hybrid cloud. So it's the outcome of, of some effort, not a, not a product. Okay, so the next question is for you is, what's next for Blue Box? You're going to get an IBM email address, is there integration? <laughs> you got on SoftLayer now in 90 days, which is a big press release. Um, I got to ask you, 90 days, that's not a big deal, why not 30? Right, right, well. Come on. <laughs> we didn't work very hard, we were pretty lazy. You guys are slow, no, I mean, Seattle, a little, the, little on the, slow on the uptake. That's right, it no, was I mean, summer, right? But, we were taking summer off. <laughs> uh, talk about the 90 days, I mean, I, I, I'm joking, I'm joking, <laughs> but I mean, why not, if you're agile, why 30 days, why not 90? I mean, why, why is 90 an important number? Yeah, so 90 is an important number for us for a number of reasons. One, just getting through the diligence process, the amount of effort that takes, particularly for a company like IBM, they really scrutinize the companies they're acquiring for good reason. They want to make sure that that's the right fit and it, it, uh, the portfolio is great. So that process was took a lot of emphasis. We closed the deal, and then the first 30 days, we really spent on HR integration. So how do we get the, the teams, the people, everybody situated um, feeling really good? I think acquisitions are a tough time, particularly for a startup going to something like IBM. 
And so we put all of our emphasis into making sure everybody at Blue Box is excited. They could see the career potential. They could see the opportunity in the products. Uh, and in the midst of that 30 days, we then began planning for what, what were going to be the initial sort of releases that we were going to go do. And getting Blue Box dedicated onto software was decided to be that first, first big step. Makes sense. We have a global footprint. It gets us reach to customers that we didn't have access before as independent Blue Box. Um, and arguably, it was the easiest engineering challenge. Uh, and it was the most fun engineering challenge, being able to take what we've, we've built and see how extensible that platform was. Uh, was, was a great exercise. We also did a bunch of work in diligence to do to do this, so we already had experience with what it was going to take. So it was a big sprint. Um, in, in reality, it was actually done much faster uh, than 90 days. We waited to this event to announce it, uh, to have something fun to talk about. But um, it, was, it was a great accomplishment, and we're already seeing uh, immediate customer demand yesterday from the, the blast that went out, which we've never seen in, in the history of our announcements. Normally, it's, it's follow-on interest sort of days or weeks later. But literally, we had, we had active leads saying, this is a really cool product, and we're interested in buying uh, coming yesterday. So that's, that's trailing. Going forward, the next big emphasis is on Blue Box Local. So how do we take all the technology that we've built to deliver hosted private cloud and put that in a customer's data center? And again, trying to do that in a way that we're delivering not software, but an experience, an SLA to the customer. And nobody else in the space, we don't think, is approaching that problem uh, in, in the right way. We've got some people around the fringes that are doing the as a service methodology right. You see the Platform 9 funding, Canonical's doing some of that effort, and, and MetaCloud continues to have some capability there. But they're all focused to a large extent on software versus that delivery as, okay. as a unified entity. Okay, so we've talked privately, so I won't share some of the intimate uh, details, um, but I with IBM, we also have talked to those guys from Bob Picciano all the way across the senior management team. We also talked to other folks out there, and I recently sat down with Dave Donatelli, who's a new leader at Oracle, and I wrote a post on Forbes, um, and according to, I'll read you the quote, then I want to get your comments. According to Donatelli, the move to the cloud is one of the most profound underlying infrastructure changes causing mass restructuring and change for existing hardware players. To amplify this point, he says, any large scale hardware vendor without a successful public cloud will be severely challenged business model. Your comments, IBM, I'll see, Public cloud, Amazon. I mean, IBM has to be in the public cloud business. Is that what you guys are doing? Is that part of the effort? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I agree with that quote. And you, you see that in the history of IBM, and you see that in the history of other competitors in the space. So IBM obviously uh, diversified their x86 business to the Lovo last year, and then with the IBM Cloud business unit that was formed this year, is making a giant emphasis in all consumption models. So that public, dedicated, local, Bluemix uh, services, IaaS, that matrix, the nine, nine grid there story, that's what we're working on as part of IBM Cloud today. And so public is a critical component of that story. It's a, a component that IBM has not historically delivered particularly well on. And it's a story that together now, we're pulling together an incredible team, the right set of talent, and we're bringing an offering to market uh, in the foreseeable future. So IBM is basically saying, we will, we will have public cloud. We will have public cloud. Jesse, why do you think it's funny you keep talking about delivering experience, and I think that's, that's the right way to look at the problem, and, and clearly, Amazon upset the Apple cart because that's what they did. They delivered an experience to your screen with a credit card and you, you, you had your cloud spun up. Why do you think it takes so long for the, for the old dogs to learn the new trick? Is it just because they're old dogs in the new trick and they just haven't no, used it's that a, filter? It's a great or? question. It's, it's, it's revenue recognition, I think, to a large extent. So think about the legacy business model. You sold a bunch of hardware with a bunch of software, you got a bunch of money up front, you recognize that revenue, when next month you went and you sold the same thing to somebody else. The experience model, you, you have that small transaction at start, and it's a, it's a land and expand model, and it's a fundamentally way of conducting business. It comes with a fundamentally different set of technologies that power it, so it's not just a business model transformation, but it's a technology transformation at the same time. But when you've got this stable operating uh, platform and it's generating you material revenue, it's, it's hard to, to adapt. It's the classic innovator's dilemma. Right, right, innovator's dilemma. That book just keeps on, my, fav my one and only favorite uh, business book, and it just it keeps showing that Smart people making logical decisions based on business parameters will miss discontinuous but look, change, just, right? Just because IBM is late doesn't mean it, it can't win, and I think that's the key, right? We right. are so early in this transformation. You think about the global spend in IT, how much money has historically been spent on that hardware and software, and that's now transferring over to as-a-service capabilities. The, the, uh, the timeline for that, we are at the very, very beginning, and so, IBM is the only provider that has that complete story of open by design and public dedicated local as a service, as an experience, and the enterprise relationships. And you combine all of those pieces together, if we can execute on, on what we're talking about here, we think we've got a really material, materially interesting story. Okay, so I got to ask you the kind of the competitive strategy question, which is you know classic, you know, business school 101. 
you know, economies of scale, AWS, Amazon Web Services has a trajectory over a decade, building blocks and a, slew, a bunch of services built into that, Elastic Beanstalk, Redshift, et cetera, et cetera. The danger of going too fast and trying to meet the trajectory of, say, Amazon is diseconomies of scale. Are you guys aware of that uh, at IBM, and what are you guys doing to think about that? Just move the goalposts or change the game, add more things to it, share so, as much as you can. Yeah, great, great question. So I think the biggest challenge I've seen in this industry is so many providers trying to imitate and follow Amazon, and you're not going to win at that game, right? It's for exactly the reasons you just listed. It's, it's the scale, the experience, the footprint, the, the service catalog. Those are all things that, that far exceed uh, the, ability, uh, the ability of many companies today to, to mimic. And so the question is, how do, you, how do you build something that Amazon doesn't have? And how do you make that compelling to the enterprise buyer? And what does Amazon not have? They don't have anything on-premises. They don't have anything uh, dedicated. They're missing that open by design story. So Amazon, to a large extent, is a proprietary platform. It's a wonderful proprietary platform, but you're locked in when you start using those APIs. And as soon as your data sits on Amazon, uh, it's going to be hard for you to get it out. The open by design methodology that, that IBM Cloud is moving forward with gives customers a lot more freedom, a lot more flexibility, and it gives them choice of, of locale. So the only way to get a private cloud with Amazon is to spend $600 million like the CIA, and there's, that hasn't been proven to work yet. You get a lot more flexibility with the IBM Cloud story. So we're not going to we're not going to mimic. We will certainly have capabilities and technologies that support and do well, many we've heard, we've things. Heard, well, we've heard from customers that said, "Hey, I'm running a little bit of Amazon here, and I want to bolt on some Watson Analytics." Yep. Mm, I had to move everything out of Amazon, so it makes a lot of sense for you guys to have that alternative. Absolutely. One well, and nobody's going to buy from one vendor. This will be a multi-vendor world, and it should be a multi-vendor world. And so the the question is, how do we get technologies that will be part of that multi-vendor story, and how do we get deliverables that the customers actually want? So I got to ask you, what's next? How is the politics going at IBM? Who's your friend? Which groups do you like the best? Share the inside. Open up the kimono and share what's going on inside the curtain at IBM. Yeah, that's a question I get all the time. The first question is, how long are you stuck there? And then the second question is, <laughs> how, how bad are the politics? And the answer is, I'm not stuck there at all. I'm there because I'm having a blast. It's, it's so much fun. And the, and the answer to the second question is that the IBM Cloud BU that, that's one of the most exciting, innovative, agile groups I've ever worked with, and, and that was my biggest fear. I've never worked for a large company, and so coming into arguably the largest technology company in the world now, uh, was expecting all kinds of challenges and new experiences, and there certainly are challenges and new experiences, but the group is dedicated to building a product. And they got a young team market. booming with the experience. They got Cloudin was in there, yep. and they've had a few other acquisitions. Software, Blue Soft Box, layer, Blue Box. You guys got the new, the new blood in IBM. Yep. Yeah, and we're building that IBM Cloud BU around these new teams. And what's great is that there, there aren't turf fights around folks that have been there for 20 years. They, they're all supportive, they all want to help, they all want to figure all, out how to the integrate. They're open, open source DNA is in the Absolutely. company. So that's real positive. And research team, like the, the research team by itself has done some phenomenal stuff. So look, IBM's reinvented itself umpteen times over the last 100 years. This is just this next generation. Uh, and they, they've got a system to do yeah. this. We're really excited to be part yeah. of that system. I mean, system. we've been covering IBM for a few years now, and we heard the new strategy when, years ago, and watching it play out, we would check in with Bob Picciano all the time, uh, in heat Chusa, I'm worse for Bob. Love the strategy, love what's going on with the cloud, um, with all their events. Um, now let's take it back to OpenStack. What is OpenStack's identity right now? And they're at an inflection point. What's your view of OpenStack? What, they could, sometimes you don't take the fork, or sometimes you stay in the path, this API-ification, Craig McLucky was talking yesterday, like if you force it too hard, you could really kind of be out on a limb. There's all kinds of nuances here in OpenStack. What's your opinion? Yeah, you know, I think there's a couple ways to, to slice that cat. So you look at the beginning, OpenStack was, was founded by NASA and Rackspace to be a public cloud platform, to be a public cloud platform that many providers could stand these uh, implementations up and have this worldwide network of, of technology. We missed that boat early on, right? But it became a wonderful private cloud platform. And through that private cloud, uh, uh, productization effort, you started to get enterprises interested. So we, we've crossed we've crossed the gamut now. Enterprises are actively not only asking about OpenStack but implementing OpenStack. So that's no longer a question. And that was the most apparent thing walking into IBM. It's like they have so many relationships with banks, insurance companies, governments, uh, et cetera, and, and they're all not saying, oh, tell me about OpenStack, what is it, how does it work? They're saying, how do we bring OpenStack and everything, that, that the value it creates into our organization? Uh, so. Now we're in this private cloud world, and we've got to sort of swing back towards that public cloud world again, being able to, to bridge those two, the two chasms. 
So public cloud requires much faster delivery of features. It, it requires a different set of scale uh, than you traditionally have in a private cloud, where private cloud requires sort of more stability and consistency. We've got to figure out a way as a community to, to bridge both gaps. And so I think a lot of the emphasis that IBM Upstream will be uh, working on is, is that, that duality. So what's the standard issues? What do you see trending well that's standardizing with OpenStack that's hardened that people are going to be doing? We had Derek Carlson say earlier on the Cube, developers should be assembling more, building less. Do you agree with that? What's the state of the DevOps? Yeah, so that's that's the whole microservices argument, and I, I think that's true. I think if you look at this API economy that's it's been created over the last couple years, um, it's a wonderful way to develop new applications, and that's what draws a lot of people into Bluemix, which is the, the Cloud Foundry based platform as a service that IBM has. So you look at the Bluemix service catalog, and you can pull together all different sets of APIs to compose an application that does things that historically you would have had to build all on your own. So I absolutely agree with Derek. The question is, in what environment do you do that? How are the tools laid out? Who, pro who provides them and are they delivered as a service? And so that's that's the key to me is that as a service mechanism. It's, it's always great to have you in theCUBE. It's like you're a guest analyst in and of yourselves, <laughs> kind of like ESPN when they have the coaches that come on, not retired yet, to give some commentary. So I got to ask you the last final, final question. Greg's going to kill me for going a little bit extra again <laughs> long here. Um, What's the, what should we be looking for in theCUBE as we go to VMworld next week, we get Oracle Open World coming up, Amazon reInvent, we've got the big cloud shows coming up. Microsoft's the only one who hasn't had theCUBE yet. We'll get into Microsoft's Azure event. Uh, Microsoft, if you're watching, we gotta, you got to get us in there. Um, but those three events, what should we look for? What questions should we be asking? Yeah, so I think the Oracle quote that you read is, is quite fascinating. So you think about how do you stay relevant in a world where public cloud will dominate? Uh, and so thinking about the services that, that Oracle is bringing, that VMware is bringing, uh, and the relevancy they have in the marketplace, and then how they're differentiating. So if you've got a proprietary cloud, public cloud, that's based on your own set of technologies and capabilities, how's that any different from what Amazon or Azure is doing? Uh, versus if you have an open cloud, how, how does that relate? So um, this notion of open source kind of taking over the world as it relates to the cloud implementations from these, these big vendors. That'll be a pretty fascinating How about AWS and the enterprise? What questions should we be peppering them for? <laughs> Cost. <laughs> and I think it's, it's this nickel and dime notion. Um, and it's not that it's expensive. I, I, like, I, I don't care about that argument. What I care about is it's really hard to predict what your bill will be. You mean like TCO or total cost of ownership? No, or just, just being able just to understand prediction. what your spend will be. Uh, because they have now built a billing mechanism and a, and a relationship with a customer where every little transaction has its own associated cost, it becomes a very opaque experience from a, a customer and, and one that is ultimately very frustrating. All right, Jesse Proudman, CEO, founder of Blue Box, now part of IBM. What's your official title, like a GM? They give you yeah, CTO. CTO of Blue Box, of Blue Box Divi Cloud Division, CTO. Just Blue Box and IBM company. Blue okay. <laughs> all right, here we are. We have all the data here in theCUBE. Uh, we'll be back. More live coverage with Silicon Valley after this short break. <laughs>